my friends, I'm Rick and this is your seat at the table and this is still Labor Day 2023. Last great summer holiday, uh, if you will. We've uh, some actually nice weather outside, although it's supposed to be hot and nasty later in the afternoon. I have about a dozen projects that are halfway started. Looking, My yard looks like a disaster zone or a war zone out there from uh, landscapers, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, it's so hard to get motivated when it gets hot. I've spent too much of my time in the heat as it is with my job. So we are looking at Battle Technology issue 1002. Now I believe it says it claims it's issue 2 in here. The second issue of Battle Technology is a good place to begin exploring the layout of this magazine, blah, blah, blah. So this one is a photographic copy. So somebody took the damn thing apart or page by page scanned it and then saved it into into PDF format which then became the, the, the PDF that we're looking at that I was able to gra uh, graciously given to me <coughs> I was able to print out and this was one of the ones I used to have but the damn gophers are enjoying it lighting their damn nest and whatever's gone with them anyway so we look at things uh, one of my favorite bad guys each characters of the early era is his sad recall or the red duke he's kind of the bogey the the Cretan bogey the Cretan bogeyman or uh questionable lord with with you never sure from one one book series to the next what his motivations are but he were he, sh he crops up in one of the early uh, gray death no uh, novels and uh when he the grace and uh, carlisle and uh, the gray death locate and capture the Helm Memory Core. It's on Helm and it's through the assistance of Duke Rykal that that uh, the Great Death Legion's survivors are able to pack up and flee the world with the, the Memory Core along with other other issues and uh, other support going on there. The, it's a question of whether he actually held up his end of the bargain or not but anything I like this guy and I've always liked his his flair and I like the type of a persona that projects into the Battletech universe to really adds some flavor uh, to various levels. And it just cements my argument from the earliest days that too many people when we look at faction combat or faction interaction in the game are enamored by the really big players. So we look at Word of Blake, we look at the House Davion, we look at the various clans themselves directly as the big the big woohaws and, and they are but the real fun the real challenge of playing battletech for a player's perspective is not being the the elite of the elite being the top dogs of the hill the kings of the mountain but it, but to be a defenders or antagonists of a small tiny corner of said uh, bigger picture so you can have lots and lots of campaigns and 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 a group of people or players or or a mech unit that can progress and get better and develop skill sets and improve their reputation over time by starting out doing these small little gigs and and focusing on that i mean it's so in this case, you know, the Grayson, Grayson uh, Carlisle, he takes jobs, he takes some pretty desperate jobs early on. There's no guarantee they're going to win, and the only way that the, the unit has a chance of surviving is, is that the, the, ter the, the would-be freedom fighters that, that hires them need to succeed. Or in their own case, trying to get off and, and help the, the, uh, keep his unit together so they can survive to get on to the next thing, and, and so on and so forth. So anyway. And, and then we start seeing the, the increasing uh, inclusion of things like uh, non-battled mech gear. So if you have a big stompy robot and your whole game is basically a war game pushing, uh, you know, simulated combat units around a map, you know, and uh, you, why would you care if your mech warrior has a has a armed is armed with a pistol or a submachine gun or a laser or something unless of course you you're going to that level of detail where it's possible that your mech warrior machine gets disabled and they're either going to bail out and and 
continue the fight on foot somehow or evade capture from uh, you know whatever but and if you're going for the mech warrior at, at this point mech warrior was beginning to become more of a thing and uh, so people wanting to play a, a role-playing game setting in the or in the setting was becoming more attractive so we've seen additional uh, fluff pieces if you want because this is pages of, of fluff talking about you know non-existent machine guns that, that uh, could be available for you then we have a short story uh, the David ambush many light mechs can take one heavy in the street by street combat so we see an example that gets led up to some stuff that shows up in one or two of the novels we see a exclusive feature of black luthien it's one of those things that uh, I it's only been in recent years that Catalyst or anybody took any effort to make a tristy or, or focus on the major planetary uh, player shakers and players. So all the capital worlds, for example, should have a well-detailed uh, bio in some kind of source book. And and there are some, and they're they're hit and miss. It's like the the Terran the Terran uh, solar system, the Terran system itself, and Earth. They should have done an entire source book on that location, period. Because there's so much importance that happens on the grand scheme, you know, that, that it's important to have a better, deeper uh, dive in, in life and ex in, 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 uh, uh, existence and, so and social morals and whatever that's going on in that particular uh, little bubble that makes up the Terran system. So see things like this one crop up is really nice. Uh, of course, you can't have the Japanese culture in, in uh, House Krita and not have frickin' uh, ninja running around or the spirit cats of the Draconis Combine. So the Nikakami, and we have a nice entry in here, of course. Gives us some story in their history and how they operate, and who they work for, or who they don't work for, what they're capable of. So intelligence agents, sabotage, Capture and death, escape. Then we get a short story dealing with that very subject, a dagger's death. Alright, so always I always like these short stories. They're really nice and they really add flavor to the grander scheme of things. Then we have a section called Battle Cover. So they're talking uh, in this case green woodland camo number one and some various worlds where this kind of uh, camo is, is common or would be desired and brings us to technical readout the devastator dbe 5a mark 3 a whopper of a of a tank to develop in the latter years of the old star league and earlier demolisher from the earlier demolisher tank right. so that's a nice little silhouette going on there this thing packs a pair of ac20s an SRM-4, a medium laser, two small lasers, and a flamer. Alright, so here we get to combat salvage. This is what I was talking about at the beginning. The WVR slash RFL hybrid, the Wolfman. So we get this history of the first Wolfman. During the second battle of Ryerson on Brigham's planet in 2986, one of the combatants of the Mech Warrior blended a uh, Validus Ullman of House Creed's Vagid Legion while a blast 55 ton uh, Wolverine got into a ring fight. So basically, he, it gets beat up and, and, and loses half of its uh, stuff. And it falls real close to a, uh, a rifleman. So there's some pretty stringent rules in the, the uh, DCMS when it comes to salvage rights. And uh, you might be a stabled uh, mech warrior, i.e. a mech warrior of a, from a family that has their own personal mech. The downside of that sort of, that sort of thing is if you lose that mech and gets destroyed, you then only dis dispossess yourself, but you dispossess your entire family. And your family and your, uh, you know, your, whoever might have been piloting it before your character uh, could very well be dependent on their income their portion of the income coming back from that mech being uh, what it is. So in this case, this, this person was able to convince another mech warrior to use their, their mech to drag the rifleman next to the, uh, the Wolverine and then immediately got some technicians and Aztecs to gather and they started to uh, cannibalize uh, one machine to fix the other on the spot and in doing so managed to sidestep the DCMS's uh, salvage rules or something. It was able to keep Mr. Ullman as a mech warrior for a time being and he went on to pilot this very ungainly, very uh, 
confused machine uh, until his demise in a later campaign. And his success gets around a technical base, and of course this leads to others to make some variants of the same, or to do the same thing. So apparently there are enough components of the, the Wolfman, and, or the Wolverine and the Rifleman are interchangeable. So one of the downsides with the particular design, uh, or a major flaw, was the inability for the waste uh, to tra uh, traverse. The, combination of the uh, rifleman torso and the wolverine uh, uh, anatomy in the lower section made it so it was frozen in place or basically fixed in place so in order to maneuver to get your full weapons to bear you would have to actually uh, pigeon step your mech in a circle or something like that so you had some advantages and disadvantages and it goes into explain all that stuff the main part though is 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 the fact that it highlights the ability for you to kit bash your mechs to make something different and something new especially back when, before you had this wonderful this convenient concept of, of battle value to, to just decide what you want uh, you actually it was a little harder to acquire stuff you had you had a monetary base kind of like your war chest and from that you you purchased stuff and sometimes it was cheaper to buy salvage stuff that was not functional, uh, where you could buy two or three or four mechs for the price of one that is, and with the intentions of using your newly hired technician base or your existing technical base to revitalize those machines or f to get them functioning. And in some cases, they're going to come off as a Franken mech. It's just the way it is. And the fact that you can do that is is such a uh, a, a draw for so many people, in my in my opinion. Then we get our next section for Battletech. It's called Battletech Simulator. Optional rules variant for range combat, maximum range. So if we, if, if the game companies of the day, so Fast of the Day says, hey, here's a bunch of guys get together and says, well, what if we tweak this rule and we allow this? And somebody will say, well, how much will that unbalance the existing mechanics of the game? Well, how, how do we tell them? Well, we need to test it. Well, we get some get guys, some guys together here at the office and we run a couple of scenarios and see how it plays out and get our opinions. And then we go to a bigger a bigger pool of people. And that's where we get things like entering it into this because it's, not, it's considered non-canon or beta canon rules. So if you apply them and, and you're successful and you have fun with them and they, they seem to fill a niche that wasn't there before, that word gets back, especially at the conventions and things like that, to the writers and designers uh, of the era who then decide to implement that rule or that change or maybe tweak it even a little bit more and then uh, then implement it in an actual rule book and Bob's your uncle, right? Just saying. So we have another scenario here for MechWarrior, Night Shadow, which of course deals with some ninjas, right? You're going to compete with some ninjas, MechWarrior. You're, you're a braver, braver fool than I am, right? Right. I mean, the difference between a young fool and old fool. Well, a young fool has all the fun, old fool gets to gripe about it. There's the old that lives long enough to gripe about it. Save the dragon. So, right. Dragon's Edge. Basically, some scenarios here for tabletop and for rope and for mech warrior both. So, it's going on. More than warriors. The next issue coming in from Tharkin, Tharkin on Guard, a Pleasure Planet, the fifth, the fifth kit. Hey, uh, hey, between my glasses, I know on the 20th I'm going in for my yearly eye check. Because being diabetic, I'm, they tell me I have to get my eyes checked every year. It's not very pleasant. 20th also happens to be my 57th birthday, not that it matters. But hey, there is Battle Technology, second edition. And I'm hoping this year the doc, they said that the doc they got will be willing to t to s check my prescription as well as check my eyes so I can get potentially an updated version of reading glasses. These damn bifocals, I, I just, I, I don't like them at all. Anyway, this is Battle Technology, issue number two. Until next time, we hope you guys have yourself a great weekend. Mm -hmm.